You can't do it, Jake, and I'm not your friend if I lay off, huh? Well, what's all this talk about layoffs? Ah, uh, your crazy brother's got a notion to split town. Oh, great, you're leaving again. That's really, really terrific. Take it easy, Annie. It's just until Megan is acquitted. Oh, isn't that great, huh? Megan's up on a murder rap and he's going split spill. Oh, for once I agree with Lucky. You should stick around for Megan, you know? Hey, look at that. We agree. I hmm. thought you cared about her. I do care about her. That's why I gotta go. All rise. You may be seated. Due to the unexplained absence of the defendant, I have no choice. Ah, Miss Gordon, so nice of you to join us. Perhaps you're not aware that you're on trial for murder, or perhaps you're trying to guarantee your own conviction. My apologies, Your Honor. Oh, Roger, if only you could hear me. If, if only my little visits here could, could just spark you to open your eyes. Well, we can't lose hope, can we? It's so warm in here. Why don't I just... Uh, I'll just get you a Kleenex and wipe your forehead. What's this? <laughs> well, uh, maybe your daughter's words can reach you. It's certainly worth a try. As long as Megan left this here, I suppose I should read it to you. Dear Dad, not a day goes by when I don't say a prayer for you. I love you so much and hope with all my heart that you'll open your eyes and come back to us. Oh, it's very touching. You know, and everyone thinks she's just a stuck-up prima donna. Well, she certainly doesn't sound like it here. But if my prayers aren't answered, then I know I've done the right thing, even if others condemn it as wrong. My God. Well, at least you'll never know, Roger. Yes, operator. Please connect me with the police. With the court's indulgence, if I may have a word with my client. If it expedites matters, I can think of several words myself. Megan, where have you been? It doesn't matter. If you don't tell me what's wrong, I can't help you, Megan. What could possibly be wrong? Sarah and the rest of my family should be very happy right now. Jake took the hint, and he's left. Megan, For my good, he says. Your one and only priority is to convince the jury that you're innocent. If Jake's leaving, can help you to Yeah, that. well, that's what he says. The only thing I can focus on right now is the fact that he's gone. Mr. Nichols, that's all the time I'm going to give you. Miss Gordon, I will consider contempt charges at a later date. Be grateful, please, that I haven't already decided against you. We appreciate that, Your Honor. But if I may say that... No, you may not, Mr. Nichols. I've had my fill of delaying tactics today. Please instruct your client to take the stand. But you can see she's upset, Your Honor. We would like a short recess for her to collect herself. I'm afraid I must take exception, Your Honor. Miss Gordon had all last night and a long recess this morning to collect herself. But, Your Honor... I'm forced to agree with Mr. Callison. The defendant was fully aware that she would be called to testify today. Of course, if she chooses not to testify at all, she's well within her rights. She has every intention of testifying, Your Honor. She has nothing to hide. Well, if she but has if nothing to hide, then I see no reason for further delay. Miss Gordon, please, take the stand. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. 
Okay, let me get this straight. Now, you love Megan, and that is why you're going away. Is that right? It's not like I want to do it. It's I have to do it. I thought if I did it a painlessly, like, like write her a letter. Oh, that's pretty painless. That's great. Isn't that very lucky? But I didn't. Writing a letter. Instead, I told her to her face. Okay? Oh, why, why don't you just poke her in the eye with a red hot stick? Why don't the two of you cut me some slack? Well, we're trying to, but you're not making it easy, all right, Jake? All right. I'm doing this to make it easier on Megan. You leave in town, it's just gonna make it harder, pal. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Megan does not live in a vacuum. Her entire family is here in Landview, and they're all pulling together for the same cause. Right. right, to prove she's innocent, so... That's only half of it. The other half is to prove that I am guilty. Guilty of what? They think that I killed Michael, and that I'm setting her up to take the fall. What? So I know that if I stay here, her family's going to keep giving her flack. She's not going to be able to concentrate on what she's supposed to be doing, which is defending herself. She's going to be defending me, and I don't want that to happen. Jake, if you go away, she's not going to be able to think about anything else. I'm willing to risk that, Andy. Megan knows I'm not turning my back on her. She knows what I'm doing is best for her. Well, assuming that you're right, which, of course, you're which not. Which I am. Uh, I don't even want to say what I was going to no, say. No, come on, Lucky, would you say it? Well, don't you even want to know well, what happened? Do you happens? care about Megan? Of course I care. What's with you two? That's why my old buddy, my old pal here, Lucky, is going to go down to the courtroom. Oh, He's going to be my minute. eyes and my ears. Wait oh, yes. Minute, oh, yes. No, you she's your girlfriend. Don't I want to sit here and have a beer and talk to you. Hey, excuse me, man. Watch we go next time, all right? Hey, buddy, I said excuse no, no, me, no, didn't no, I? Take care of huh? I'll take care of this. I said you go down to the courtroom. I've got a few choice words to say to you myself. That's so, Jay. Yes, that's Well, so. look, I have had a tough day. I do not need your garbage. It's too bad. Right? I'm not going to take much time here. I just need to call you a liar and a murderer, okay? That's all. I have had enough of you and your acting. Hey, 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 Why don't you, you tell don't the truth? stop, I'm going to call the cops, all right? You know what this guy said on the stand today? No, no. To protect his precious Brenda, he lied so that Look, he would go on to Megan. I did not Keep lie, down. and you have been trying to convince the jury that I killed my I hope they believe me, because I'm like, well, the Buchanan clan seems to think that you're trying to pin this on Megan, so you can get away free and clear. I have to right? take that from them, because that's her family, but I don't have to take it from you. No, Let Jake, please, come on. Come on. Wait, 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 hey, Give wait a minute. Shot. Just, a please, bunch. just please, wait, please. all right? Come on. Look. Megan's lawyer is trying to cast suspicion on everyone who was in the hospital that night. If everyone's under suspicion, then Megan has to get off, right? That's what we all want, isn't it? Yes? That's what I'm hoping for. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so can we shake hands now and, and call it a, call it a day? Don't push it, Andy. I agree. Come on, Dan. Let him go. He's a loser. This guy is a loser. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that you were... No, Tina, look, I'm the one who should uh, apologize. I, I should have let you know that I was here. Oh, no, no. I mean, I, I should have not. Uh, Vicky and Clint, they told me that... I mean, they'd just gotten this. I didn't even think that you See, knew Clint about it. See, Clint told me he was going to cover for me at the trial today. He said, relax, try out the new sauna. So, so that's why I'm here. Look, you, you use it. I'll, I'll come back later. Sunday. No, 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 no. It's okay. I mean, I've already used it a couple times. Why don't you just relax and I'll give you some privacy and... No, wait. I think... I think we're both being a little silly. It's a big mm -hmm. sauna. Plenty of room for both of us. Right. Yeah, and plus all those, you know, the Swedish, they bring their whole families into these things, right? Yeah. Swedes, the Danes, Norwegians, they all really like these saunas. I Look how they turn out. <laughs> <laughs> Blonde. Well, yeah, blonde. I, I was thinking like healthy, but blonde is oh, good. Oh, yeah, healthy's good. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Release tension in here, you know. The yeah, heat. it opens um, pores. It's good for losing weight. Leave it to Tina to think. Go practical applications. <laughs> <laughs> you always did look good in a towel. I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> oh, thanks. I think. No, I, <laughs> no, I just, um, never mind. So, uh, did you get Gabrielle off to the airport okay? Yeah. Yeah, I did. 
Yeah. She told you about uh, the conference and, and what I had to do with if it. If you mean she told me about how you got the money to Father Tony so that he could send somebody to the conference. Yeah, she told me that on the way to the airport. Right. You must really hate me. Tina. No, Cord, you know, I mean, it was wrong. It was wrong of me to try to get Gabrielle out of town, even if it was for a good cause. You know, you know, Outlook House. Oh. I mean, she could really wait, do wait, a lot wait, of good look, for that place. Listen to me, all right? What's done is done. Okay. Besides, it really sounded like Gabrielle was looking forward to going to this conference. You know, when she gets back, she and I are still going to be just friends. Well, that's nice. Hmm. Look, I, I better go. I know you need some time no, alone no, and everything. Look. you got to get back to the court. I can just See, come back right later. See, you're right about I do need to get back to the courtroom, so uh, you stay and, and I'll no, go. No, no, I'll well, go. You know, really. Really, I will go, okay? Uh oh. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Those I got it. They just never work. I got it. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. It's just. Uh... What? Court. You can open the door, can't you? Let's be clear about one thing right from the start, Megan. Why did you return to the hospital that night? I was worried about my father. I wanted to be with him. In other words, there was no way you knew that Michael Grant would be there at the same time. No. I was in my father's room, and I stepped out into the hall. Go on, Megan. And I saw Michael Grant, and I followed him into the lounge. Why? Because I wanted to kill him. Uh, Megan, did you mean that literally or figuratively? I mean that I was angry. I wished him dead. Because of Michael Grand, my father was in that hospital room. And because of Michael Grand, my sister was sitting in prison for a crime she didn't commit. I hated him. With good reason. Objection. Sustained. Megan, when you say you wanted to kill Michael Grand, is that why you had the gun in your purse? No, I didn't even remember I had it there until we started arguing. Until he started laughing at all the pain and suffering he'd caused. So you're being angry enough to kill. That was an emotional response, not a calculated plan. He's leading the witness. I'll allow it. It was purely emotional. I remembered that I had the gun. I pulled it out of my purse and I threatened him with it. I wanted him to sign a confession. Miss Gordon, I have a question. Why was the gun in your purse in the first place? I, I wanted to keep it away from Jake Harrison. Why did you think that was necessary? Because he threatened to kill Michael. Jake again. Megan, you say you tried to get Michael Grant to sign a confession to his crimes. Did he? No, he refused. He found the whole thing very amusing. He believed that I wanted to kill him, but he didn't think I had the guts to do it. So he just kept on laughing until... Until what, Megan? Well, let's just say that he was right. I did want to kill him. But the thought of it terrified me, so I dropped the gun and I ran out of the lounge. Into the stairwell where Jake Harrison found you? Yes. Did you tell him everything? Everything. Did he offer to help you? Well, he told me not to tell anyone about the gun. That's why you didn't come forward at first. But I trusted him. I still trust him. Megan, I have only one more question to ask you. Did you kill Michael Grand? No, I did not. Thank you, Megan. No more questions. I'm sorry, Miss Gordon, but I'm afraid I still have a few questions. <clears throat> uh, one moment, Your Honor. Please. Mr. Callison, are you prepared to begin cross-examination or not? Perhaps Counselor would like a recess. Not at all, Mr. Nichols. Your Honor, I... New evidence has been brought to my attention. Evidence that will change the course of this trial.
it's not like we're trapped here. Oh, it's not like we're trapped no, in here? No, it's not. People can open this door from the outside. All we have to do is get their attention. So I'll just call them and, and they'll open it. We'll be out of here in two minutes. Cord. Hello? Cord. What? D don't worry about it. Clint's not home, uh, but I'm sure Vicky. Vicky should be home any minute, right? Vicky! Cord? Vicky! Vic what? Vicky called from the office, and she's going to be in meetings all afternoon. She's not going to be home okay. for hours. All right, don't worry. Uh, Heron's out there. Kim, there's a ton of people out there. It is Heron's day off. Heron. It's Heron's day off, and Kim just went to go take the kids and pick them up from school. Well, then, she'll be back in 10 minutes, right? They went to the park. The park? Yeah, um, Kim said that they were going to take the kids to the park and go fly kites. I don't think they're going to be back for hours. Hours. Great. I always hated these tight, cramped spaces. Oh, especially when it's so hot. They got a name for that, right? Yeah, they do. It's called common sense, right? Oh, Cord, okay. don't be funny right now. I'm not being funny. Mm. Okay, don't worry. They're going to find us. We're going to get out of here. Yeah, but what are we going to look like when we get out of here? We're going to be parboiled or poached or... Roasted. Cord, I'm too hot. Listen, all we gotta do is just fix the thermostat. I don't want to okay? fix the thermostat. I just want to get out of here. Tina, leave the door alone, all right? <laughs> no, I'm... Tina, you, you dropped the towel, Tina. Cord, who cares about modesty right now? I mean, this door won't <laughs> open. Uh, put the towel on. Put the towel on. Please. I'm gonna go try and turn down the heat. Good idea. Turn it down. You got it? I'll do it. Yeah, no, I'll okay. do it. Turn it down. Oh, no. Oh, no. Cord! Okay. No, I... No, I... you did it again, but that's, that's... I did it. It's not my fault that everything in this thing goes wrong. You're right. It's not your fault. It's branding sauna. Someone had to do a shakedown cruise, and, and we got the electricity. Oh, a shakedown cruise. Good term. That's what happened on the Titanic, right? Look what happened to them. Tina, I'm telling you, nobody dies in a sauna, okay? Oh, great. We're going to be the first. No, we're not. Tina, no, sit down. You're going to lose your towel again, okay? We don't want that. Cord, who cares if I lose my towel again? You're being so neurotic. I mean, who cares if you get found in here, if you're dead, whether you have a towel on Tina, and whether you're dressed like a nun? Stop it. Now, listen Cord, to me. Cord, just don't touch me. It's, it's going to be all hot. right. <laughs> Tina. I'm telling you, it's not as bad as all this. Cord, don't try to kid me. I know when we're in trouble. You have to get us out of here. Please, get us out of here. Mad? No, 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 I'm not mad just because you come in here and you say that you're leaving town and then, of course, you pick a fight with Dan and empty out the entire restaurant. I'm sorry, I don't blame you if you want your sort of new brother. Oh, yeah, but it would take too long to break a new one in. It's a joke, Jake. It's supposed to laugh. And I can't blame Megan's family for not trusting me either. I, I've never given them a single reason to trust me. Ever since I came to town, it's just been one lie after another after another. And even when I had a chance to come clean to Megan, I didn't do it. I just kept lying, putting up the act. And now that I need to get close to Megan's family, have them trust me, now that I need to be with Megan, I can't do it. You know the story about the little boy who cried wolf? It's me. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. There's not much to say. So I'm just gonna admit to the fact that I've lost this game I am going to get the hell out of town before I hurt Megan or anybody hey. else anymore. Jake! What? Hey, thank goodness you're here. Not for very long, Lucky. I'm hitting the road. Well, you should be. Why? Because, uh, Megan's in a whole deep load of trouble. What are you saying? Well, you asked me to be your eyes and your ears, right? Yeah. So I saw her and I heard. Well, what is Well, there's a new twist at the trial. I think you should get there pretty quick. All right. I'll talk to you later. Come on. Come on, let's go. All right. I'll see you later. Move! Bye. I'm coming. Your Honor, it's obvious as to what Mr. Callison is up to. I'm trying to introduce new evidence. And this new evidence just appeared after the prosecution rested its case? Now, Mr. Nichols, you saw it for yourself. The police brought it in for me. I had no choice but to accept. I didn't expect it. I think you did expect it, Counselor. I think you staged these theatrics to sway the jury. Uh, Your Honor, I take strong exception to counsel's words. Now, this material can determine the guilt or innocence of the accused. Your Honor... Enough. 
We're after one thing here, the truth. If something appears in the very first moments of the trial or at the 11th hour, I couldn't care less. Sure, as long as it sheds light on this case, it's admissible. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commonwealth Exhibit uh, 7. Then I request a recess to examine the new evidence and to confer with my client. Uh, Your Honor, this evidence directly involves the defendant. A delay will only allow counsel an opportunity to coach her in her response. Your Honor, this Don't is... Don't bother to object, Mr. Nichols. He makes a compelling argument. There will be no recess. Get on with it, Mr. Callison. Well, Miss Gordon, as the star of Fraternity Row, you must receive a great deal of fan mail. Fan mail? Yeah, I suppose I do. And I would imagine you answer all of it. I try. Is this the stationery you use? I don't, I don't know. You don't know? That is your name embossed in the upper corner, isn't it? Well, yes, that is my stationery. How did you get do that? You usually uh, answer your fan mail with handwritten notes or in the small portable in your dressing room? I answer it with the small... How do you know all of this? The police have taken your typewriter and matched the print with the letter in this envelope. Roger Gordon. Not your average fan. But then this isn't your average thank you note, is it, Miss Gordon? No, this is, this is a lie. This is all a very big lie. But the service set is broken, isn't it, Court? I mean, all we have to do is wait until we're well done. Have someone come in and poke us with a fork, right? Well. Hey, look, there's, there's a timer on the outside. Oh, we're, come we're on, okay. Court. What difference does it make? It's only a matter of... A timer. Yes. A timer. Eventually, the heat is just going to shut down. We're going to be fine. You're saying that we're not going to be cooked? Sorry to disappoint you, dear, but no, we're not going to be cooked. Oh, of course, that is wonderful. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank God. We're still going to be locked in here, though. Not for long. You know, it's a house full of people, Tina. A lot of people live here. They're going to know we're down here. They're going to open the door for us. Right. We're going to be just fine. It's not like we're in the middle of a jungle or something. No, you're right. <clears throat> We've been in worse situations than this, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. And we have lived to tell about it, haven't we? <laughs> Not dead yet. Yeah. So far. <laughs> oh, my God. But it is getting so hot. It doesn't feel like that timer is ever going to get clicked oh, off. Don't worry. We will cool off soon enough. <sighs> Not soon enough for me. <sighs> so what are you going to do? Hmm? Okay. Can you do? <laughs> Hmm? What is it? Don't knock it till you tried it. Oh. <laughs> oh, lovely. Mm. <laughs> like one of them puffs is out in the storm all night. What are you saying? It looks like a wet dog. I could say drown rat if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, how does it feel, Rin Tin Tin? <laughs> Actually, that feels Ooh. real good. Yeah. Mm, that's nice. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Randy. Wait, if you've come for round two, Jake's gone. No, I haven't come for round two. I wanted to apologize. That's nice. Excuse me, I have to go back Look, to... Look, Annie, wait, please. Look, I didn't mean to cause a scene. Forget it. No, I don't want to forget it. Look, Andy, after no, all... No, look! Really, forget about it. It's okay. So why'd you come here the first time? I don't know. I've been feeling really... Restless, you know, like I can't stand still. Sounds like you got a problem. Maybe if you stood still for a while, then you could deal with it. Are you saying that I'm hiding something? You said it, not me. Andy, come on. You don't understand, Andy. Nobody understands. That's right, Dan. Nobody understands. You like it that way. That was your choice, Dan. Look, Andy, I don't blame you for hating me. Any more than I blame your brother for wanting to hit me or the people in the courtroom suspecting me. Oh, Dan, look, I wasn't there in the courtroom. I don't know what was said. But if you know something, if you can help Megan's case. Andy, look, I don't expect it from you. 
I expect it from other people. Andy, you, you, you know me. You've trusted me. Yeah, well, I've lived to regret it. Well, you're I? not going to regret it this time. Please, just keep this one thing in mind. It's Brenda's safety that I'm concerned about. What about Megan, huh? Who's concerned for her? Andy, look. Certainly not you. She has got a great lawyer. The prosecution has circumstantial evidence, that's all. And if she's lucky, she will get off and she will be free. Finally, an honest statement. But what if she's not lucky, Dan? What are you going to do then? What if Megan is convicted of murder? Are you going to come forward with what you know? A lie, Megan? What lie? That is your letter, isn't it? No! It's written on your stationery, on your typewriter, addressed to your father, Roger. I don't care. I didn't write this. Your Honor, this so-called evidence should have never been admitted. With all respect, I have to protest. Protest noted and denied. Get on with it, Mr. Callison. Will you read the letter aloud, please? No, I won't. This is obviously some kind of fake or forgery. Very I know well, then I will read it. No! I'll read it. Dear Dad, not a day goes by when I don't say a prayer for you. I love you so much and hope with all my heart that you'll open your eyes and come back to us. Do you deny the sentiment? Not the sentiment, but these words are not mine. If you will read the rest, please. But if my prayers aren't answered, then I know I've done the right thing even if others will condemn it as wrong. You've been made to suffer so much. You and Sarah and Vicky and so many others I love, all because of one man. I offer no defense for my actions, but if I had the choice to make again, I would choose the same thing. I love you, Dad. It was because of my love that I confronted Michael Grand and made him pay for his crimes. It was because of my love that I killed him. Then what this can't be? It's like she said, it's gotta be a forgery. Your Honor, this letter is an obvious plan. Anyone could have typed it. Now, Mr. Nichols, <laughs> now your client agrees this is her stationery. The police can prove it was typed on her typewriter. And it was found in her father's bedside drawer at Landview Hospital. That only proves that it was a carefully orchestrated attempt to plant evidence against the defendant. Or it could be what it appears to be, a confession intended for Roger Gordon's eyes only. Lucky. I'm almost finished. Don't bother. Yeah, well, obviously so am I. That's all, Miss Gordon. No more questions. Mr. Nichols, I assume you'll want to redirect. No. Thank you, Your Honor. Are you sure, Mr. Nichols? Quite sure, Your Honor. Miss Gordon has answered the charges honestly and forthrightly. She has no apologies to make. No need to dignify this latest and most flagrant ploy of the district attorney. Your Honor. I withdraw the word ploy. In that case, you may step down, Miss Gordon. Why didn't you ask me about that letter? I didn't write it, but I know damn well who did. You trust me, don't you, Megan? Yes, Then but... keep quiet for now. The less we say about the letter, the less its impact. What about the jury? I have faith in the jury. We've made a strong case. I'm willing to take a chance on what we've got. Mr. Nichols, do you wish to call another witness? No, Your Honor. The defense rests. Very well. I'm inclined to forego a recess and begin summation, unless there's an objection. There's none from the people, Your Honor. We're prepared to take our case to the jury, Your Honor. Then, Mr. Callison, if you're ready. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I, I know I don't need to remind you of everything that is you've heard and seen in this courtroom. May I have the letter, please? I believe that each one of you is capable of separating the truth from the lies. Truth. The victim, Michael Grand, was a hated man. Truth. Mr. Nichols has been masterful in his attempt to shift suspicion from the defendant to the others. But it is also emphatically not true that he has been successful. For you know, as I know, that it was Megan Gordon who finally took the law into her own hands. I feel for her, as I'm sure you do. How could you not? She's an actress, a fine actress. Actors survive on their imaginations. And sometimes, in the stress of a deeply felt emotion, the line between fiction and reality disappears. Perhaps for Megan in that terrible, terrible moment, it was easier for her to believe that she was acting in a play. And afterwards, perhaps she even convinced herself that what she had done was make-believe, not murder. Whatever the case, this letter, this confession, proves that Megan Gordon finally did make the distinction. Her conscience overcame her imagination. In this letter, she admits to the cold, hard fact of her crime. And if she cannot ignore it, neither can we. Megan Gordon is a lovely young woman. The credit to her family, to her community. But on the night in question, she took a gun from her purse and ended the life of a human being. And for that, I am very sorry to say she must be held accountable. And for that, you must find her guilty. Mr. Nichols? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Callison in his quest for conviction has conveniently overlooked the basic fact of this case. It's not about Megan Gordon's guilt or innocence. It's about shame. Make no mistake, there is shame in this courtroom and has been since the day this trial began. The shame lies with the guilty man or woman who is letting Megan Gordon take the blame for Michael Grant's death. I told you in my opening statement days ago that Megan Gordon is innocent. Any one of a dozen people could have killed Michael Grant. Bo Buchanan, Clint Buchanan, Dorian Lord, Dr. Dan Wolick, Carlo Hesser, Brenda Grant, Jake Harrison. Consider them all. Shame lies with one of them. Which one of them do you think is guilty? honest with you what you're right I'm the one with the problem with honesty <laughs> glad you found that so funny Cord yes do you think I set this whole thing up I thought about it for a little while yeah then I had this image of you running down here in your little towel with a screwdriver trying to fix that lock <laughs> and I thought no way <laughs> 
Because I would never do something like this. I would never do something like really? this. I really wouldn't. Never. Never. <laughs> if I had even known that you were in here. Oh, if you don't, wait, wait, wait. If you had known that I was in here, you would have just like walked away, right? <laughs> well, Court, we're having fun in oh, here now, aren't we? Damn. You can't say that it isn't fun. Oh, girl, you'll never change. I will too you change. Will never I do change. change. No, I just, I just change back. <laughs> Come on. That's what makes life interesting, right? You are life so cute. With, life with Tina. <laughs> it's always interesting. Well, at least you laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. I love it when you laugh, Cord. Seems like we haven't had... Well, it's just nice that even though we're in a small, cramped, tight little space, we can still have fun. Tina, we've never had any problems having fun. But we have had some other problems. I do wish I had my camera, though, because I think this would make a nice snapshot that we could put in the album. Oh, no. Yes. I could just see CJ's face <laughs> looking at his mom and dad trapped in the sauna. <laughs> CJ would love this. He would take, see the picture and get a hoot out of it because he'd say, oh, you have to wear just those little towels, and he'd laugh at it. You always do look good, Mattel. Each of these people hated Michael Grand. Each had a reason, a compelling reason, to wish him dead. But none had the courage to come forward, to admit that hatred, that wish. Only Megan Gordon came forward. And for that, she has been brought before you. Not for her crime, but for her honesty. But what about the others? What about Jake Harrison? Jake Harrison worked for Michael Grant secretly and was almost sent to prison for it. Reason enough to kill? You decide. And Bob Buchanan. Michael Grant was instrumental in sending his wife, Sarah, to jail for a hit-and-run accident that wasn't her fault. Was Bo seeking vengeance? Only he knows. The same thing could be said for his brother, Clint. Did he blame Michael Grand for trying to destroy his wife's campaign? For threatening her life? Did he want to settle the score with a loaded gun? And let's not forget Dr. Dan Woolley. He made no secret of his love for Brenda, the victim's wife. How badly did he want her? Enough to kill for her? Or did she save him the trouble? Did Brenda Grant take the law into her own hands to keep Michael Grant from taking her child from her? To pay him back for trying to kill her? And last but not least, what do we make of Dorian Lord? Thanks to her, the so-called confession turns up on the last day of the trial. She just happened to find it in Roger Gordon's nightstand. Or did she just happen to plant it there to throw off suspicion that might be aimed at her? Pick one, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone could have killed Michael Grant. Each had motive and opportunity. But is the district attorney looking in their direction? No. Because of her honesty. All blind eyes of justice are fixed on Megan Gordon. But you can see the truth, ladies and gentlemen. You can separate fact from fiction. That is why I am confident that when you deliberate, you will reach the only verdict possible. Megan Gordon is not guilty.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's in your hands now. Despite counsel's words on both sides, there is only one person on trial here, Megan Gordon. It is her guilt or her innocence that you must establish. She has been charged with murder in the second degree. If you believe that the prosecutor has established that fact beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must return a verdict of guilty. If, however, you have any doubts about her guilt, then a verdict of not guilty is required. May God guide your judgment. The jury will retire to deliberate. All rise. Honey, I don't want you to worry about a thing, all right? There's no way they're going to convict. She's right, darling. This is going to be over real soon. That was a bang-up job, counsel. Question. Back off, boy. He did what he had to do. Right now, let's get Megan out of here. You just come with us and we'll wait for the good news, okay? No. No. You don't want to wait here, Megan. Excuse me. I have to take care of something. What you think? Do you? Well, then tell me. Please don't spare me. Don't try and make it nice, Jake. Megan. Just look at me. Look at me straight in the face and tell me the truth. Have you been setting me up all along? Tonight, Larry makes a deal he can't refuse on Perfect Strangers, followed by Just the Ten of Us.